Hey guys, Martin here and welcome to part 4 and hopefully the last part of the tutorial even though I think I won't manage but let's just see what we've just created. We've created a weird loopy um, DNA strand, uh, a second strand in the middle that's animating on as it's as the camera is moving and the third stand, strand which is uh, stationary. Um, you can do with these whatever you like. Um, I actually kind of like this, but uh, yeah, you can you can make them rotate them from flat to uh, curly or reversed or be creative with it. Um, I'm I'm not giving you a list of rules to follow. You can just be creative with it. So um, without further ado, I want to really get this out of Cinema 4D in this tutorial, uh, in this part of the tutorial. So let's try and do that. Um, let's just see what it looks like um, in the middle right here. It's actually looking quite bright. So the material, the first one, um, let's turn the luminance down even more to about 9%. It's looking pretty black, but that's much more better. Okay, now we're going to go um, to the render settings and add a and add a depth of field effect. We do this by pressing effect, depth of field, and just leave all the settings as is. 5% uh, doesn't seem much, but it it's grows over distance. So let's just see where our focus point is on the camera, which is pretty far. And let's move the point of interest, the target distance, back to there. And turn on the front and rear blur. And they're both at a value of a thousand meters. I think they're meters because it says M. But let's just move them down to well, 65 to, for the rear blur. And uh, let's make it a 65 as well for the front blur. Um, my text object isn't as big. I'll just show you what I've just done. Um, this is my text object, and it falls just between the lines of the of the depth of field. So, if we preview this now, and see, five percent is quite a lot when something is that far in the distance. Um, we might actually make this um, this strand right here, the big one, um, a bit closer to the camera. Just just not not too much, but. And, and let's just preview that if it looks all right. And there we go. That's that's actually looking better than what you've just done. So. And you can place this ob these objects at random. So, but this is looking pretty good. And you see what the texture, uh, the dense preset texture, which we've edited, uh, has done. It's made this tutorial be comp composed of um, several blocks which actually look pretty good if you use uh, a red for them so let's just see what it looks like uh, at the start when this this big loop is moving so let's just check it out and that's actually pretty cool because it, it starts out really blurry and then we get this 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 central uh, strand which is in focus, and this one is getting more in focus as well as it's uh, looping around. Then, about 40 frames in, we get uh, we get this and the introduction of the third strand, which is close to the camera, and then finally we end up here. Um, this this is a, actually a quite vital part of um, your 3D editing is previewing. Uh, just preview, 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 and only when you're happy with it. You start to render because render times can go pretty long when you um, add an anti-aliasing um, and add some global illumination, etc. But we're not going to go for the global illumination on this tutorial because it's an animation of about uh, 150 frames at 50 frames a second, and it might take a long time with global illumination checked. And um, what we are going to do is add another light. Let's get out of the camera real quick. Place it behind the the middle DNA strand. A bit closer, and let's put this to a soft shadow and 
an inverse volumetric uh, visible light. Uh, leave the rest of the settings as is. Yeah, the color is good. And let's see what this looks like. Back a bit. It, di it didn't really do that unbelievably much, but it, it gives a bit of a, a softer backside. Let's let's see if there is any difference. Yeah, it makes just that bit more uh, more easy on the eyes. Which is good, so let's just leave it at that. And we're done with this one, so before I shut this part down and go to the part in After Effects, um, we're just going to go to Render, Render Settings, uh, and I'll show you how to render real quick. Uh, general, Full Render, just leave it at that. Outputs, um, we just set the settings in part 1, with heights 120 by 720. Um, Resolution is 72 dpi. You're not making a picture for print. If you're printing, you got to turn this to 300, but we're not. We're making a video for web, so keep this at 72 dpi. Um, film aspect, that is a HDTV 16 by 9. Pixel aspect ratio, make sure it's square. Then, frame range, all frames. From 0 to 90, frame step 1, fields none, that's good. Let's make a little place to save it on. And I just made a separate file, yeah, it's here. Products, let's call it that. Save. Um, and make it a QuickTime movie, depth 8-bit. Um, we don't need this. You, if, if you know how to use it or want to use it, use it, but I don't really uh, want to use it at this thing. Uh, let's leave the multipasses out as well. Anti-aliasing to best. And uh, let's put the filter to animation and let's just do it. Do a 4x4. Four four. Um, if you go into 8x8 eight eight or 16x16, 16 16, your render times will become ridiculous. 4x4 uh, four four is pretty good and renders pretty fast as well. Um, threshold 10%, that's good. Options, leave it as is. Depth of fields, just leave that on. And we're not going to use a global illumination, so let's just close this and hit render. Well, um, I'm not letting you wait through all of this, so I'll see you at part 5. I'm Martin, see you at, ne at the next part.